Hello ladies, welcome to Be Dot Brave. If you don't know what Be Brave is, I suggest you take the time to look in the about page. Um, I am Ambrosia, I am the creator and founder of Be Dot Brave, um, where we believe that it takes courage to be free within and also um, we are strong believers in emotional um, healing and wholeness. And so I know you guys are probably wondering, what happened to her? She just disappeared and you see my younger sister Samantha and I um, you guys loved her she talked about depression and the art of overcoming depression and she shared her testimony her story and that was great and then you were able to see our sister slash auntie slash best friend slash cousin um, Maisha and she talked to, to us about the art of overcoming distractions and also uh, she encouraged encouraged us last week to take a risk and so I am so very grateful that and those ladies were able to come in and share their seeds of wisdom and i've received such great feedback that everyone loves them and so of course we always welcome them back um to be doubt brave and to go ahead and sow their seeds of wisdom into our lives so let's get started um you guys know i'm all about being courageous and in order to be correct courageous i recently learned courage is vulnerability and so with that i am going to go ahead and share something that's near and dear to me um and just kind of catch you all up what's been going on with me and also um, go ahead and just be transparent. And I hope that in this transparent and my vulnerability that I'm able to touch someone's heart um, and touch someone's soul. And I hope you guys will watch, of course, like and share and um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to inbox us, whatever, whatever you need. So let's go ahead and get started. So tonight, this evening, I want to talk about our topic is get out of your head. Get out of your head. And this is for my overthinkers. This is for my warriors. This is for my those that just stress, stress, stress. So this is for my ladies who are losing sleep at night um, and you're not able to sleep and you don't really know why or what is triggering your causes of you uh, and causing you not to be able to sleep. This is for you all. Um... Recently, really recently, uh, maybe in the last few months, I actually had what I would deem as a complete nervous breakdown. And so in that breakdown, um, I was not well enough, I would say, to go ahead and be with you all because I also do not believe in bleeding onto people. And so I had my wonderful lady step in the gap for me while I took some time away um, and spent talked to God and talked to the to, to therapist <laughs> and was able to get myself together. Um, basically, it was anxiety. I literally was having so much anxiety welled up inside of me. And my thoughts were going a million miles a, miles a minute, literally to the point where I could not even vocalize my needs to anyone. I, I could not even get out of my own head. I was constantly overthinking. I had been losing a lot of sleep over the past few months. Also, um, you all know that I was just married, started a brand new job, um, moved into a different, totally different city. So I had these huge three major transitions going in my life. And in all of that, I was suffering from anxiety into one night, um, about, like I said, about a month ago, I had a nervous breakdown. And it was strange to me. Um, I couldn't connect my thoughts in my brain is how I would describe it. Um, it felt very, it just felt very uncomfortable, I would say. I never had experience in something like that. Like I've had a panic attack before years ago when I was a teenager, but not as in my adult years because I'm always so controlled. And what's, what happens to us strong women who are always so controlled, um, we begin to have anxiety about those things that we cannot control. And that's what I believe. It's just a small snippet of what I've understood so far. I'm talking through my process, um, like I said, in therapy and just, you know, really trying to figure out what it was that caused and so far it's just a series of events, just really life, just um, over overdoing life, uh, um, constantly wanting to be in control of situations and stressing in those situations where I did not have control over. Um, but I have hope for you. There is hope for you. I'm so happy to be back tonight. Um, Proverbs 12, 25, and this is the New King James Version. It says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. And 
And that was one of the scriptures I was able to cleave to. Also, um, a, a good one is 1 Peter 5 and 7. It says, cast all your anxiety on him. And in those times where you are overthinking, um, and if you could just sit, I would encourage you to sit back and meditate on the word, sit back and take a deep breath and really calm your thoughts, especially after you've had these long days of work, especially after you've been running around with your children. I would, I would suggest in order to calm your anxiety is to really just sit and be still. And for me, uh, or when I was having that, that nervous breakdown recently, I could not be still in my mind. I, I promise you, I would try to slow my thoughts down and I could not do it. And that's because I was taking, I was taking on that responsibility within my own strength versus really depending on God and casting my cares on God and, and letting, giving God my anxiety and giving God my, my stresses in life and just allowing him to lead and guide me and, and, and guide my footsteps. Um, Philippians four, I want to take a look at Philippians four, um, chapter, no, chapter four, verse six through seven. And this is, um, the new living translation. I like it. It's a very easy read. Um, here we go. I have it right here. So Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds. As you live in Christ Jesus. And so in times of anxiousness or you feel overwhelmed or even you may feel underwhelmed or your thoughts are not able to slow down. You have to sit, sit back, take a deep breath and say, God, look, I give you my I give you my job. I give you those issues there. God, I give you my kids. God, I give you my husband. God, I give you, you know, this grocery list that I'm thinking about at the same time as I'm really trying to do this laundry and and at the same time as I'm doing laundry, I'm thinking about when I'm going to clean. And at the same time I'm thinking about when I'm going to clean, I'm worried about a project at work. And while I'm thinking about the project I'm cleaning and the project at work, then I'm thinking about what I'm going to cook on over the weekend. You know, I'm, it's all these thoughts, all these stresses, all these life, especially if you live in California, you understand that if you are in traffic, baby, I take the five to the 710 every day and that traffic alone is a stressor. Okay. I'm, my next goal is to meditate in traffic. I heard it's possible. Never tried it. I'm striving to get there, but I'm saying all of that to say your thoughts go a million miles a minute if you allow them to, and, and you got to go to go to God and everything. And with prayer, the word says, um, come to God with everything and within prayer and supplication and make your requests known in the, in the God who is faithful. He, he will hear your prayers. He will hear your requests in your heart. And, um, Philippians four, Verse six through seven is saying, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. So when worry starts to creep upon you, you have to say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to shake this worry off. Look, God, I can't. This is not in my control. I cannot handle the situation. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Because if I think about it, if I try to control it, it's going to be too much for me. It's going to be too much for me. And I have a life to live. I, I want to live healthy. I'm all about self-care. And um, self-care, a lot of people are, are encouraging self-care, but your self-care is not only for your physical being. Like, of course, I'm all for eating healthy. I'm all for taking care of your skin. I'm all for going for a massage. I am all for those things. I do them myself. I, I, I encourage you to, if it's the $25 massage, I encourage you to try to get a massage once a month or once every other month just to release, you know, that stress off your shoulders and your back. Your back. We carry a lot of weight on our, we carry a lot of weight and a lot of thoughts in here and it goes to our shoulders and it goes to our back and all the stress is just welled up inside of us. But I do encourage also your... Self-care is your mental health and your emotional health and well-being. And that is, I'm so, you know, when I was finally ready to come back, I was so excited to be able to share my testimony with you all because I can, I can say I know what it feels like to be in the pit of thoughts. Like, I know what it feels like to literally be in a deep, dark 
hole in your mind of thoughts and all of your thoughts are on top of you on top of you and you can't even get out of your own head you can't even you, you try and you can't even get out of your own head because your thoughts have literally piled on top of one another and you are having panic attacks you're stressing out i had a whole entire nervous breakdown in itself was which was, was really scary heart racing and you're like this is not life and i, I would encourage especially women I mean, of course, we, we are all for all women, but especially women, my black women, we are taught, we are taught to just be strong. We are taught to just be strong and to move forward. We are taught, don't worry about anything. We are taught to just keep going, going, going. We're taught to take care of everything. We are taught to cook, to clean, to work full-time jobs, to go change your kids, pick up your kids, uh, to go to um, change diapers. You're taught to do, you're taught to do everything because we are taught to survive in this world because of course we have our own troubles within this world. That's a totally whole different conversation. But at the same time, my black women, my sisters, I, I encourage you to really take care of your mental and emotional health and well-being. Because the the stats are up. We are high in depression. We're high, we're having high anxiety and panic attacks um, because we take on too much. We take on too much. We take on our own issues, we take on our friends' issues, we take on our family's issues, we take on our co-workers' issues, and everybody is just coming and they're bringing their sob stories and their stress and their pain and their anxiety, and we just taking it all in. We're just Oh, you know, we just want to be a shoulder to lean on. But sometimes you cannot be a shoulder to lean on. Sometimes you have to get somebody off your shoulders and lean on to God for your own self. Okay? You cannot pour into someone if your cup is empty. If your cup is empty, you don't have nothing to give. You're giving from an empty place. And if you're giving from an empty place and your well is dry, then you are dry. Maybe you have a little bit left to give, but if that's all you got, then you're not surviving yourself. You're not at your best. You're not being able to relax. You're not able to even go to God in prayer and say, God, you know, I have a lot on my mind. I have a lot on my shoulders because you're so, you're so consumed helping other people. Now I'm all for being my sister's keeper and I'm all for helping other people. I will pray you through anybody that knows me can vouch for me. I will pray you through hell and high waters. I'm gonna pray you through. I'm gonna pray you to heaven. I'm gonna pray you in your lowest for you in your lowest valley. I'm gonna pray for you at the mountaintop. I will pray you through your heartbreak. I will pray you through your destitute times. I will pray you through your valley. I will pray you pray you through while you in the desert. I believe all and pray through. But if you are more consumed with helping other people and praying them through the storms and you're not praying yourself through and you're not covering yourself in prayer or you're not allowing God to pour his Holy Spirit into you, his anointing into you, his new fresh wine into you, then you'll wake up and you'll be, you have nothing to give because you've given so much. You, you, bore, you, you gave too much. You gave all you had to where you have nothing left for yourself. And that is a dangerous place to be. Um, I'm a witness. That is a dangerous place to be. In the midst of, of, of even having this whole nervous breakdown, I was like kind of confused. I was like, well, God, you know what I'm saying? I'll be praying 24-7, Jesus. I mean, I pray for everybody. What's going on? And really, the Holy Spirit was able to minister me and to, and to let me know, like, you're empty right now. I need, I want to have an encounter with you. So for what I need you to do is I need you to do what my word says and with everything with in prayer and supplication, make your requests known to me. I need you to cast your cares on me. I need you to lay your burdens at my feet because that is my job to take the weights off your shoulders. I'm trying to free you from the stresses of life. Don't get me wrong. God will make you strong. He'll make you steadfast, but he'll also give you wisdom when you need, when you, and, and let you know when you got to turn it off. Uh, he'll give you wisdom to let you know when you have to disconnect from social media, when you got to turn off your phone, your phone, you got to put people on silent. Do not disturb iPhone users. Do not disturb is your best friend. I have business hours. Ask those that know me. My business hours are between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. After that, it's do not disturb. You can't reach me after 7 I'm not available. <laughs> Why? Because I'm taking care of myself. <laughs> Y'all, it feels so good to share this testimony with you. And I know there's so many women out there 
that feel like you have nobody to talk to or feel like you don't even have time to have no nervous breakdown. That's what I told God. I said, God, I ain't got time to have no nervous breakdown. Jesus, I ain't got time for anxiety. I got too much to do. That's what I was telling Jesus. Like, I got too much to do. But really, I believe that God was wanting to, he was wanting to talk to me. He was wanting to interact with me. So he'll find a way to slow you down by way of a nervous breakdown, a panic attack, anxiety attack, whatever God has to do, letting you go from your job, he will find a way to slow you down. And I would encourage you, you know, y'all, I'm not no therapist now. I know Jesus, I can give you good advice, but I would encourage you to, you know, seek out a uh, uh, wise counsel, uh, whether it be uh, spiritual uh, counseling, whether it be you see a Christian therapist, um, whatever it is, be, but don't carry all the burdens of life on yourself and think that you can free yourself But because you can't free yourself. And sometimes the best freedom comes through a, a conversation and sometimes those conversations can't be pooky in them. Sometimes those conversations need to be with a professional. <laughs> So that they could give you professional advice and good. Oh, my therapist told me something really good. She was like, you know, if you want to be courageous, you got to be vulnerable. I was like, oh, okay, girl. Well, I feel you. And so also I understand that we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the power and the word of our testimony. And so I, sh I wanted to share this story with y'all. And I'm so happy for everybody who's here, who's watching, who's loving me and praying for me in the background i'm happy that you were able to tune in tonight and i, I can't wait to continue um to speak to y'all about this journey of getting out of your head remember this is for my overthinkers this is for my girls that can't sleep at night you're losing sleep nothing is working melatonin don't work it's not helping you you're still awake <laughs> It's because really in those moments and those times, you got to go to God in prayer and let him know everything that's on your heart. And even if you don't have words to say to him, just say, Jesus, I need you. I, I must too much in my mind. The Bible says to be still, to be still, to be still, to be still. And to be still is not a physical stillness. A physical stillness is good. I encourage that. Sometimes you just got to sit down somewhere. But it's a, it's, it's a mental stillness. It's being still in your mind. And... When, and when you're still in your mind and you're meditating on the Lord and you and you sit in a quiet place and you get still in your mind, God is, is really able to talk to you. He's really able to fill you up so that when you do have Pookie and them blowing up your phone because they need advice and they need to go a call and they need two shoulders to lean on, you can give them that shoulder because you'll know you'll have a cup that is full and you won't be pouring from an empty place. All right. So that is it. That's all I have for y'all tonight. Remember, it takes courage to feel free within. This is B.Brave. I'm Ambrosia signing off. Please watch, like, and share. Have a great night.